If you make videos on YouTube, the sad reality is, no matter how good your video is, nobody's gonna click on it if it doesn't have a thumbnail that grabs their attention. Fortunately, you can turn the process of creating a thumbnail into a pretty fun graphic design project, and I did make a video previously all about how I make my thumbnails, but that was a couple of years ago, so I'd still encourage you to go give that video a thumbs up, but I didn't quite nail it in the way I wanted to because since then, my thumbnails have undergone a bit of a glow up which is a reference to adding the glowing outline that's in most of them using Procreate on the iPad. So the original reason that I wanted to make this video is because I have gotten a lot of questions on how I add those glowing outlines to my thumbnail. So if you just want that specific part, definitely use the chapter markers down here so you can jump to the part of the process that you're most interested in. However, I figured since I was talking about that, I might as well run through everything I do from taking the photo, adjusting it in Photoshop, working with it in Procreate, and then finally creating a thumbnail for YouTube. So I have a few example thumbnails here to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Here's a relatively recent one of the iFootage Shark Slider Nano, which is how I'm getting this camera movement on my main camera over here. And this has all of the elements that I pretty much use. It has a decent product photo. It's got this black bar with big bold text that's hand drawn, even though this is just traced Helvetica, we'll get into that later, and then just handwriting over here. I haven't had a typed letter on my YouTube channel in almost four years, which is a very pointless record, but I'm very proud of it. I've got these pinkish magenta neon lines that go around this black bar, and the black bar is there for when I have text to really make it easy to see, because when you're designing your thumbnails, you really gotta keep in mind the billboard effect when you're driving down the highway and you see a billboard. You're going probably pretty fast and you only have a few seconds to get all the info on that billboard, so they really need to communicate things super clearly. YouTube is the exact same way when people are scrolling through their subscription boxes or search results or recommendations. Your thumbnail is just gonna pop up for you know a fraction of a second and it's gonna grab their attention to make them want to click on it and watch your video. And then I usually add a glowing outline to the product to make it stand out. I do that in Procreate. And then lately I've been going really JJ Abrams with everything and adding in lens flares and, and all kinds of craziness. Here's another example that I really like that has sort of those same elements in it. And sometimes when it's things like in this case, a wireless unit, I drew in little lightning bolts to kind of look like, hey, it's transmitting. If I'm talking about a microphone, sometimes I'll have little like things shooting out of it because it just sort of helps add some action and some interest to an object that's otherwise just standing still and not doing anything. The thumbnail for my newer NW700 review is actually one of my favorites because I went way over the top with it. I started with an image that I was pretty happy with, and then I do a lot of cleanup. I do a lot of dodging and burning and dust removal and all that kind of stuff in Photoshop. I add the text, which just like in my previous thumbnail video, I always like to have some element of the text kind of slipping behind the object. It just sort of you see that on magazine covers a lot, and I think it looks really cool, so I do that. But this one, I added the glowing outline, I added the lens flares, and then around the microphone, I also added a bunch of dust and like sparkles and glitter, which is completely ridiculous. But as neat as this picture looked originally, having the microphone have, it looks like now there's motion in it. It looks like these other microphones, this other equipment is there. And I just came and like, boosh, like set down this NW700 and it's like crazy. Now I don't always add text to my thumbnails. In this case with the cloud lifter, there's already a lot of text on the product itself. So I didn't want to add more text because I thought that would just be distracting and messy. So I just added the glowing outline, which I thought made it look really interesting. This is one of my favorite more recent ones, which is when I connected 10 microphones to the Rodecaster Pro. So I did a flat lay where I outlined some of the things around the edge and of course the roadcaster. This had a lot of photoshopping in it though because the day I recorded this video and took this thumbnail, I was wearing a new sweater that like tons of little dust and speckles just covered everything like snow. And so I spent probably close to an hour going through and eliminating basically every piece of dust on the roadcaster. It's one of those little things that nobody probably would have noticed, but because I did it, it just took it, you know, from a nine to a 10 or from a 10 to an 11. Here's another example with the roadcaster where I thought the image had enough in it and was busy enough that I didn't need to add text on it. Whether or not you add text to your thumbnails is a personal preference. I think, especially if you're a smaller-ish channel, adding text is another good way to sort of grab your viewer's attention. In my case, I draw all the letters, so the, the colors and the style of the text is like part of the branding. Same reason that I started adding the glowing outline 
because this photo without it is great, but almost anybody could take a great looking flat lay with the roadcaster and some gear. So by adding the glowing and the colors, that was a way to tell people like it's, it's mine because hopefully those are recognizable elements. And this was actually the one that started it all. A lot of the products I take pictures of are black and the wall behind me a lot of times in photos ends up looking kind of dark and it's very hard to separate a, in this case, a phone, a black phone from a black product or a dark product from a dark background. And the glowing outline just helps to make things stand out. So this was the very first time I did that. I didn't add any text, just took the image, added some glows, had a lot of fun with it. And that's what kind of started the new era of how I'm currently doing my thumbnails. And when I made the thumbnail for the NW700, I actually made a GIF out of all the different layers in Photoshop. So here you can kind of see the different process of the original photo and then adjusting the photo, adding in bokeh, adding in lens flares, adding in glows, adding in text, where it goes from you know how it came out of the camera to what actually gets uploaded is a pretty big transformation. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how some of this stuff comes together. This is the thumbnail for my desk setup video and you can kind of see how I adjusted the photo itself. I kind of cropped it and moved it a little bit, but I also dodged and burned myself to make me pop out a little bit more. And then I also got rid of some distracting elements. You notice at the top, there's a power cable for my light that I got rid of. And little things like that really do make a very big difference, especially when you remember that people are gonna be viewing your thumbnail super, super tiny. So it might not matter on a big screen to dodge and burn and change all that stuff, but when it's this tiny on screen, anything you can do to make elements pop out really does help. Here's another example of a more recent thumbnail. This was for the neat widget USB microphone. It's a very interesting mic. I tried to take the picture of it. I left space in the picture knowing that I was going to add text. And here's the black bar, which I add. And then I just use the eraser tool to erase the product. Here is some smoke that I added in Procreate on the iPad. Here's some glitter. I ended up not using the glitter because I didn't like the way it looked, but I like the smoky dusty thing. And then here's the neon around the bar, which again, I just erase where the neon pops in. I just erase it over the product. And then I added my lines around the product and some goofy stuff around the cable. Just anywhere there's a light, I just sort of add a lens flare, added some bokeh. There's already like bokeh balls in the background of most of my images, just from things like the drum set and the lights, but I kind of like adding just a few more. It's probably kind of cheesy and might look dated, but I don't know, I like it. And then I added sparkles around the cable for some reason. And of course, my text. A lot of times I'll use the bold Helvetica text hand-drawn Helvetica, hand -vetica. I'll use that if it's like I'm making a bold statement like no wires or best thing or whatever. But if I'm trying to sort of ask a question, that's when I'll use just my regular handwriting and I'll draw out the letters. I do have an old video all about how I do that. So you can check out that if you wanna kind of improve your lettering. It's old, don't judge me, but the techniques are still solid. And then I usually add in smaller, thinner handwriting. So there's kind of two weights. There's the big, bold one, and then sort of thinner. Your thumbnails really start with the picture that you use for them. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I make sure to take an actual separate photo with my camera because it's going to come out better. I can take a raw photo, adjust it. It's gonna look a lot better. But every once in a while, I'll have to use a frame grab. And so in this case, for the Pavo Tube video, I used a frame grab from the video that I thought was going to be interesting, but it's really muted. I'm wearing an earth tone sweater because I wasn't really planning to be on camera and it matches the background and the lights are kind of overexposed. So I really changed this photo a lot in Photoshop. I went through and used the brush tool to play with my sweater to make it blue because blue is more recognizable. I used Procreate to add in glowing outlines on these lights and then I added the text power of the tube and that ended up being the final thumbnail for the Nan light. Pavo tubes. So I think what's gonna be best is if I actually work on the thumbnail for this very video, that'll probably be the most interesting. What I have in my mind, since it's largely focused on the iPad, is kind of a close-up shot of the pencil on the iPad with the screen of the iPad like illuminating my hand and the pencil, because I always think that looks really cool. I've got two cameras, the EOS R with the 50 millimeter RF 1.8, and then another one with the Sigma 24 1.4. And just to save some time, if you wanna know all the lighting and all the product setup and all that for the photo specific part and the B-roll thing, I do have an entire video all about product B-roll and photography. I'm following those same principles here. So instead of making this video twice as long, 
You can check that out if that's something that you need help with. Otherwise, I'm gonna experiment until I get a photo I like, and then once I have that photo, we'll throw it into Photoshop, and then we'll pro, we'll go create and procreate. So I played around for a little bit and took a couple of photos. I think I have a usable one, but just in case, I think I'm gonna do a frame grab from this camera here, the Sony a7S III of just me kind of holding the iPad. And there's probably a few different ways to do that. I'll probably end up replacing the screen. Once I have the clips that I'm planning to use for the screenshot and final cut, I just use the arrow keys to find a frame that I like. And then up here in the export, you just save current frame. Now, if your final cut doesn't have current frame as an option, you can click add destination and then you can find current frame right there and add that and it will be in the menu from then on. But I'm also gonna look for other frames. I like, I like the one where I'm holding the Apple Pencil because maybe it's gonna show, hey, I'm drawing on the iPad. So after all that, I have about seven photos that I'm kind of liking. I don't really love any of them, but it's really important that even if there's some photos that you don't really think are great, you might wanna save them. And once you put them into the software you're using to make your thumbnail, in this case, Photoshop, it might just look different once it's in that 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio. So right here, I've got a document that's 1920 by 1080 with a resolution of 300. This is just kind of my ongoing thumbnail document. So it has a whole bunch of layers and a whole bunch of different assets that I use in different thumbnails. And I will just bring in the different photos. So for example, here's one that I took with the Canon EOS R. And I really like this one overall. This is kind of what I had in my mind. And I will just do some basic adjustments with the camera raw filter. These are raw photos, so it gives me a lot of flexibility when it comes to like playing with the highlights or changing the color temperature. Maybe I wanna warm this one up just a little bit, make it pop just a little bit. These aren't my final adjustments. Usually I add in a little texture, a little clarity. Definitely play with colors. I like things to be super saturated, super bright, if you couldn't tell, go into curves. There's not a lot of science here on my end. It's kind of just like what I like and what I think looks good. So it's very much personal preference. And then I usually do go into the color mixer and change some of the hues so that the purples lean more blue, the blues lean more blue, and then we play with the saturation of some of those colors and even sometimes the luminance. And so I'm just gonna do that for each one of these photos and bring them into Photoshop. And one thing that's happened is I went down from seven photos to five photos because as I was putting them into Photoshop, that was where I noticed some of them that seemed kind of similar, I could pick a favorite. So basically there's all the photos I took on the camera, not all of those make it to the computer and not all of those make it into Photoshop. And even of the screenshots I took, I decided I like one better than the other. And there's a whole thing in YouTube about should you have your face in your thumbnail or should you not? And I think there's a school of thought that says things tend to perform better when there is a face in them, which is why you see a lot of YouTube thumbnails with those ridiculous facial expressions. Like, oh my gosh, this Photoshop filter will blow your mind. I have noticed if you go to my channel and you look at my most popular videos, I'm pretty much not in most of them. So I don't know what that says about what people want from my channel, but it does not seem to be my face in the thumbnails. So I've got four potential thumbnail images for this shot. And I have this one, I have this one, which is a close-up. This is kind of what was in my mind. I've got sort of a wider version where you can see my hand sort of in an awkward position because it's like unnaturally reaching around the camera. And then I've got a very similar one, but closer. I have rulers, guides on my Photoshop to show me the exact center so I can work with framing. And then I'll take the pictures and I'll try to figure out like how I would actually want to frame them up for a thumbnail. In this case, with this one, I would probably do that. And then in this blank area up at the top, that's probably where I would put you know, text or something. This one I think is fine as is. It probably wouldn't really need text. Maybe I could zoom in just a little bit. And then what I do is use Command minus to make it really, really small, basically like it would show up on YouTube and sort of see if any of these do stand out or don't stand out. So this one is okay. This one, I like the photo. So if I don't use it as a thumbnail, I might save it and use it as like an Instagram post. This one could actually work, even though it's my least favorite, <laughs> but you actually see what's happening. It's a hand drawing on an iPad. I can touch it up potentially. And this one, I do like this one too. So let's see here. So sometimes I just start experimenting. For example, in this one, I am going to rasterize the layer so that way I can more easily do the dodge and burn. And dodge is basically gonna increase your exposure in some areas. You could do this with layer masks, but I'm just gonna take that brush and put it over my face to, that's too much, I'm a little pasty there. But just to make me pop, so that way you see the person in the thumbnail, 
I'm not doing anything, you know, too intense here, but just trying to make some stuff pop. I have found that with my desk mat, if I use the burn tool, it helps these colors to pop out a little bit, and it kind of creates almost like artificial shadows, which adds some depth to it. If I burn the mat a little bit more under my arm, it almost creates like a shadow that really wasn't there. So now I'm gonna start thinking about how I would wanna put text in here. Here I could put at the bottom like how I make my thumbnails. That might actually look really cool. That might work. I'm actually gonna burn my arm a little bit. Ouch! <laughs> and now I might burn this screen just to bring out the image a little more. These are all little subtle things, but they really do make a difference. And again, if we're going for that freeway effect where people see this stuff in a split second and make a viewing decision based on it, any little thing you can do really helps. Now, I love Photoshop's healing brush. Is that the healing brush? Is that what it's called? Yeah, spot healing brush. And then basically just zoom in. And if I notice weird things like dust, like this little spot on my mat, just click it and it goes away. And if you get rid of them, it can really make a difference, especially if you are doing a product. You really don't want it to be covered in dust and scratches and stuff because it's going to look really crummy in your photo, even if it's a good photo. So taking time to get rid of those things really help. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll play around with titles just because it's easier than me having to write them out. So I'm going to do thumbnails. That's how you spell it, right? Yes. So I'm just using Helvetica because that's what my bold font is based off of. And so thumbnails would be here. Down here in my Photoshop document, I have a folder of essentials. And this has things like the black bar, the neon. If I was going to go live, it has like the live icon. If I'm doing Final Cut or Audition or something like that, it has those app icons that just live there. So I'm going to duplicate the black bar and then just bring it all the way up. Boom, there's the black bar, which is just a solid black layer that's at 36%. It's, it's nothing crazy. And then I just want to make sure it extends off the edge, bring it down a little bit. So what I'm imagining, and I think this might actually work, is on this top black bar here, it will say how I make my, and down here it says thumbnails, really big. What I'm going to do now is leave the thumbnails part on and then save this as a JPEG, and I don't really care what it's called, it doesn't matter. Save it as a JPEG, just to the desktop. And now, through the magic of the internet, or the air intranet, I am going to airdrop this to my iPad. Share and airdrop, I always feel like that should have been called sharedrop, kind of the way that NASA really messed up by not calling astronauts, nastronauts. Anyway, now I've got the thumbnail image on my iPad. So to get this image into Procreate, I just go to Photo and then Albums and it brings it in. And then here is the image that I had made in Photoshop. So here we go, I'm gonna start now. I'm gonna create a new layer, do all of this stuff on a new layer and I'm going to use the Luminance brush and I'm gonna use the Light Pen. And I already have my palette here, so I'm gonna select the magenta because I want the outline of the iPad to be magenta. And for, to make a straight line, you can just draw and then hold the pencil and it will make the line perfectly straight. And I'm just gonna go around the edge of the iPad here from the light. Actually, I'm gonna make the brush a little bigger, maybe around like 11%. That's way too big. 7%, there we go. I'm gonna outline the edge of the iPad. I'll go in and kind of clean it up around this edge where it goes under the light that's sitting there. Technically, that is the edge of the iPad, though, so it could go kind of like that. It does not have to be perfect. There we go. That actually looks pretty great. And then we'll also do the pencil because that is a key component to this whole process. Now I'm going to create a new layer. Every time I make a change or do something sort of different, I just put it on a new layer and I'm gonna use white, and now I'm just gonna outline, make it thinner, and just sort of add some accent lines. Heather and I have been watching a lot of anime over the past few years, and there's always like crazy lines that really emphasize stuff, so that's why I started doing that in my thumbnails. Don't tell anyone. I'll add one on the pencil. And sometimes I like to do one that's not just a straight line, but it's like a straight line, and then maybe like, a little triangle bump up thing. And it just sort of adds some some like visual interest. And now I'm gonna play around a little bit with lens flares. These are all gonna be on their own layers. So I'll add a new layer. And instead of the light pen, we'll use the flare. And all you have to do is tap and it'll make a lens flare. And then you can use the adjustment brush 
or not adjustment brush, adjustment arrow to then change it and reposition it. And I think it would be ridiculous and stupid enough in the right way to put a lens flare right where the pencil is touching the iPad because this is such a key part to this whole process. Yeah. So there we go, that little flare, there it is without it, there it is with it. I think it just, it's one of those little details that just takes things up to the next level. And now as far as other lens flares, I'm gonna put them on their own layer because I do have this light over here. So I'm gonna make a bigger lens flare and put it on this light. Now you might hate the lens flares and think, think that they're super cheesy and you would not be wrong, but I like them. They just, they add something, they make it look a little polished. I don't know. We'll see how I feel about that in a year or so. So now I've got a lens flare there. The picture itself already has bokeh balls in the background. These are like my drum symbols and stuff, but I'm gonna create a new layer and then go into bokeh lights and just sort of add a few more. The color doesn't really matter because we can fix that in Photoshop. And now the next step is the lettering. So I'm going to change the opacity on the image that we brought in from Photoshop, create a new layer above it. And now I'm gonna use the calligraphy monoline brush just with white and it's gonna be pretty small. It's gonna be like 4%. And now I just start outlining these letters and kind of like I said, you can draw a straight line and then hold it down and it will become straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is sort of a pointless step because you could probably just use like a hand-drawn looking font or you could just use regular Helvetica. But I like this and if I use my own handwriting, my normal one where the letters kind of look like this, I just draw that and I've done that enough that I can kind of make it look how I want it to look. But if I want something to be big and bold, that's why you basically just trace Helvetica is because I know that it's going to be legible even when it's really small. If I tried to do this on my own, I could do it and it would look okay, but it would be like it, like this uncanny valley of messy versus neat where I don't know that it would be super legible. Curvy letters like this S are always a little tricky because if I try to do the hold and like straighten out thing, it's just gonna make it look weird. But again, they don't have to be perfect. And again, sometimes you might not even want text on your thumbnails. In this case, I think it's gonna be helpful because otherwise the picture is just a hand drawing on an iPad and I don't think anyone's gonna be that interested in that. So by adding the word thumbnail, it makes it more clear what the video is about. I'm not using the full features of Procreate for this. I'm just kind of keeping it really simple, but you can probably get some ideas of like, oh dang, there's a lot you can do for your thumbnails and your videos and stuff just in Procreate. I could probably do the entire thumbnail in Procreate and just take out Photoshop altogether, but I'm used to Photoshop. I'm kind of stuck in my ways and I do like the more granular control over every layer and every facet of every layer that Photoshop gives. So that's why I use Procreate and Photoshop together. There we go. So I've got the thumbnail word outline. I'm gonna turn off the layer below it. And now I'm gonna go into inking and use the dry ink brush and just fill in these letters. And there's nothing really scientific about this. It's a pretty messy brush. So I usually do an outline and then kind of scribble it in. And this kind of ensures even if you're doing a word that has the same letter multiple times, each instance of that letter is going to look a little bit different. And that's, I don't know if anyone can actually notice that, but I feel like there's a subconscious element that picks up on those kinds of things. And I, it's just something I appreciate. I worked as a Trader Joe's sign artist for a number of years when I was in college. And it was a lot of like drawing and lettering and making things look hand done, but still neat. And I really loved that. That was like a super fun job. And I just take some of those same ideas here. Do you know what you do if a font knocks at your door? You letter in, letter in. If you're not fond of that joke, I, I understand, it's okay. Now, one thing I forgot to do was to write my subtext. My videos have a lot of subtext. So there's the main part of the, the thumbnail. In this case, it says thumbnails. And then I usually have smaller writing in a different color that says something else. So for this video or this thumbnail, I wanted to say how I make my thumbnails. So I'm gonna use the blue color that I use. And then I just use the monoline brush in the calligraphy collection. And normally my handwriting would just be like how I make, it would be like that. 
But just to make things, again, a little clearer and neater, I use a lot of the hold to straighten align thing. So it would be like, how? I'm just drawing and holding. You can do it with circles too. How I, there we go. How I make my, and then I'll export that one. So now I've got all these different elements. And then what I do is one by one, so I have the most control. I guess I could export the whole thing as a PSD, but whatever stuck in my ways. I just export them as PNG each layer, airdrop it to the Mac mini, and just do that for each of these layers and then bring them all into Photoshop. So now that I've got all of the elements from Procreate on my computer, there's a couple things I can do. I can turn off the text that says thumbnails. So it's just the image. And then basically I will just start dragging all of these untitled artworks, copyright that name, to my Photoshop file. There's the thumbnails. And then for this, I'm actually going to add just a little bit of a drop shadow to make it stand out more. I used to add a stroke outline, but I kind of stopped doing it. it. Looks sort of cool here, but we'll keep it a little cleaner for now. And then I just add everything else. Here's the how I make my, that one I'm gonna add a drop shadow and oh, probably not a stroke outline. It needs to be repositioned though and resized. So it's like how I make my thumbnails. There's some bokeh. So you can see there in the background. If the bokeh turns out weird colors in Procreate, you can just go in here and press Command U and then change the saturation all the way down to zero and it'll make it white, which is a little less distracting. In this case, there's a little bit of teal in there. I don't mind that, so we'll keep it. We'll add in our white outlines and our pink outlines. There's our lens flare over the pencil tip. There we go, and the last lens flare. So now we've got quite a bit happening. I didn't do anything like dust or sparkles like I had mentioned, because it just didn't really fit in with this specific video. But now I've got all of those different features showing up. And now we can start playing with the black bar. I added that there. And here's the smaller one from earlier. And now it's just a matter of like, what can we do to make this look as good as possible? Now over here, I do have the neon kind of running over everything. And I want to get rid of that. I'll rasterize it and then just use the eraser to erase it. Nothing too crazy there. And then the same thing with the white. Rasterize that layer. Now, one thing I normally do is I have usually a border around the black bar that's on my like where it says thumbnails right there. And that's just this neon layer. So I'm going to bring that up here. I'm not 100% sure if this is actually going to work with this video because it's already pink and I feel like we have enough. I feel like we have enough neon pink happening. It's just going to be a, a mess at a certain point. I mean, I think it actually does help. Maybe it could be a different color. So we can go to command U colorize and then we can sort of maybe find like one of the blues yeah that's looking pretty good that's pretty much it my arm looks a little too pink and weird honestly so i might play with this a little bit so i selected my hand and now we'll click on that layer and do the camera raw filter and that should let me play with like color temperature and stuff there we go look at that that looks like a person's hand that's good Movie magic, there we go. I went from that, oh yeah. Oh my God, so much better. But I'm thinking since I use Procreate and Photoshop that I might want to add in and maybe throw in some of the app icons. So maybe that's something I can do and try to make them about the same size. I'm gonna call this thumbnail thumbnail because it's the thumbnail for the thumbnail video. Oftentimes I'll do a couple versions of thumbnails just if I'm not sure that I like what I like. So I'm gonna do one without the app icons. Thumbnail, thumbnail, two. So then what I'll normally do is just open these in preview on my desktop and scale them down to be as small as possible and just sort of look at them side by side and see which one sort of stands out the most. I think I like the first one though, where it is just my arm, how I make my thumbnails, boom. So this whole process, I was making a video, but for the most part, it documented everything in real time. It can take somewhere between, you know, 
40 to 45 minutes on a good day all the way to a couple of hours just on the thumbnail. It's not even, I gotta edit this video. I maxed out my memory card. I have like four cameras and screen recordings on the roadcaster going. This is gonna be a nightmare to edit. But I'm putting a lot of work into it and I want people to watch this video. So having a good thumbnail is hopefully a way to make that happen. I hope so. If you wanna take these methods and do your own thing with them, please feel free to do that. And if you know a better way to do things, feel free to share that with me and everyone else down in the comments. And if you wanna know other ways to level up the quality of your videos, you can check out these videos right here. And if you like them, then I can make more videos about making videos. Or if you really like them and wanna know how to do that, I could make a video about how to make videos about making videos. <laughs>